This video is about Darknet, Dark Help, and Dark Mark. I want to talk about three related issues when it comes to Darknet. Network dimensions, image size, object size. These related issues are the cause of some confusion, especially for people just starting out with Darknet. At the top of your CFG file, this one for example is based on YOLO v4 Tiny, is a net section with the dimensions of the neural network. By default, when you use YOLO v4 Tiny, the network dimensions would be 416 by 416. In this network that I'll be showing you, I changed the dimensions to be 640 by 480. The larger the network, the slower it is to run, the more memory it consumes, and the longer it takes to train. Let me show you what this network looks like. Several years ago, I went outside and took some pictures of mailboxes. The images are fairly close up. You can see the numbers 1 to 16, as well as the locks. Now let me show you what inference looks like when I run this neural network. I'm going to use the Dark Help CLI tool. Each 1200 by 900 image takes 3 to 4 milliseconds to get resized to the network dimensions of 640 by 480 and to run through Darknet. Remember that when running a 30 frame per second video, each frame appears on the screen for 33.3 milliseconds. So at a cost of 3 to 4 milliseconds per image, the system would have no trouble applying this neural network in real time to a video stream. As you can see, it does a pretty good job of detecting all the numbers as well as the smaller locks for each mailbox in the image. Now that I had a working neural network, I went out and took more pictures. This is set number two. But this time I stood further back, getting more of the mailboxes in the image as well as more background. What this means is the objects I want to detect the digits and the locks are smaller in size compared to my first set of images. This becomes much more obvious when I look at the images once they've been resized to 640 by 480, the same dimension as the neural network. Remember that Darknet never sees the full size images. It only looks at things once they've been stretched to the network dimensions as defined at the top of your CFG file. Let me show you what I mean. If we look through Darkmark's image cache directory, you can see the images as Darknet will see them for training purposes. The transition from the first set of close-up images to the second set of images is very obvious. But importantly, look at the size of the numbers and the locks. They are quite small, which causes a problem with Darknet, as you'll soon see. Let's load Dark Help again, but this time we'll tell it to show us images from the second set. This same neural network now detects nothing on many of these images, or only a small portion of what it could do with the first set of images. This is where image tiling can help. Dark Help and Dark Mark will split larger images into smaller tiles, individually feed them to Darknet, and combines the results. This works for both training and inference and can be used independently. The Dark Help website has a page that explains how this works with an example image from the same data set. Let's show a few examples. Dark Help has a keyboard shortcut, the letter T, which can be used to toggle image tiling. You can see how without tiling, once the images are resized to the network dimensions, the objects are too small to find. But once image tiling is enabled by pressing the letter T, Dark Help does a much better job of finding those previously too small objects. Image tiling isn't limited to inference with Dark Help. Dark Mark, the annotation tool, has also been updated to support image tiling when setting up a custom neural network to train. Load your neural network project as usual. Right mouse click to select the Create Darknet Files option, and you'll see several options which determines how Dark Mark handles the image files. 
The first option, do not resize images, is how Darkmark and most annotation software traditionally deal with images. Whatever image size you have, those exact images will be given to Darknet to train. When the image size differs from the network dimensions, it means Darknet must resize each image as it is loaded during training, which slows down the training. This is explained further in the Darknet FAQ. The next option will resize all images to the network dimensions. So in this case, with a network size of 640 by 480, all images will be stretched to those exact same dimensions. This can greatly speed up the training time as the images will be the exact size Darknet expects. As we saw with larger images, your objects will also be sized down when the image is scaled. If your objects are small to begin with, this causes problems. The last option is to tile larger images. This means Darkmark will break into tiles all of your large images instead of resizing them. The annotations are automatically adjusted for each tile that Darkmark creates. This can be combined with the resize option, meaning that Darknet will then train on both resized and tiled images. When Darkmark creates the training tile images, it creates a text file that describes each individual tile. The file lists the original source image, the size, the number of horizontal and vertical tiles created, the raw size of each tile, and then names each individual tile along with the final image dimensions followed by the number of annotations adjusted for this tile. This way, when you're reviewing the tiles, if you spot a mistake, you can go back and check where that tile came from so you can fix your annotations. That covers the topic of image tiling with Darknet, Darkhelp, and Darkmark. I hope this video has been useful. You can download Darkhelp and Darkmark from GitHub. Both are open source and free to use, as is Darknet. Come join us on the Darknet YOLO Discord if you have any questions. The link is in the video description below.